Typically, laptops that cost around $300 are not of the best quality. They sacrifice components like the build, specifications, battery life, webcam, and more, making the price point envisioned for the laptop possible. However, while this laptop in today's video does make some sacrifices, there is one particular area for which this laptop has some significance. Join me as I review this $300 Walmart special of a laptop for which I almost declare a budget sleeper. Now before we get started with this review, I just want to make very clear that neither Walmart or HP have sponsored this video or review laptop that you're looking at today in this video. I have purchased this machine with my own money for this review, and so my thoughts that you are hearing herein in this video are of my own testing and thoughts and, you know, again, no sponsorships or anything. This is a pure, honest review of this laptop, so if that's what you came here looking for, you have come to the right place. This is the HP Laptop 14-DK1025WM. At Walmart, the retailer from which this laptop comes from, retails for around $320 normally. I managed to buy mine in store for $300 as there was limited stock and this must be a new model with a slight discount for some oblivious reason. Still, at under $350, this laptop delivers a solid example of the basics and nothing more. I wouldn't call the build quality brilliant, but considering the laptop size and its surprising heft, it's solid enough to get the job done. But don't expect this thing to survive a drop though, that's why extended warranties exist, people. The port selection is also good enough. I am surprised this manages to pack in USB-C alongside two USB-A ports, HDMI, Ethernet, and an SD card slot alongside the precious headphone jack. HP also claims this laptop can charge up to 50% in 45 minutes with the included charger, the charger in this case being a 45 watt unit. While I wouldn't go out of my way to say that that's entirely true, this laptop does charge its battery rather quickly for what it's worth. Size wise, think of the MacBook Air 13 inch. It's basically that machine but with the more edge to edge display on the inside, making this laptop feel more modern looking than the Mac though the Mac would be the clear winner regarding its aluminum chassis and sturdiness. For those curious about the specifications, this uses the refreshed AMD Ryzen 3 3250U APU with Radeon graphics. This uses AMD's Zen Plus 12 nanometer architecture. This is paired with the Radeon Vega 3 integrated graphics with up to 512 megabytes of shared video memory in this implementation. This particular configuration features a 1TB mechanical spinning hard drive, but there is a model available with a 128GB solid state drive, and this is more than likely the more popular configuration for most people. The only unfortunate downside is that this is a low on Walmart laptop, and as such this means RAM takes a hit in capacity. With only 4GB of 2400MHz DDR4 paired with the spinning disk, this machine is bound to struggle out the gate, and I'll delve into that more later. While the capacity is nice, as far as the hard drive goes, I'd rather have the small but fast solid state drive if they had to have such little physical memory bundled in. The display is HP's 14 inch 1366 x 768 SVA Brightview Micro Edge display. While I don't have the exact nits value of the backlight, it visibly appears to be decent in sunlight. However, don't let that fool you into thinking it won't show reflections, as the glossy nature of this panel will act like a mirror more than anything, so take that as you will. The keyboard is very solid, and I mean that, it is absolutely excellent for the money. At this price point, I wouldn't even consider it better than pretty much any Chromebook you can buy at the same price, and would even top my current Acer Aspire E15's keyboard. It is not backlit though, so if you value that, then you will have to get a higher end model. While on the topic of the keyboard being decent, it also has a satisfying sound during typing, which isn't too loud either, and returns with a responsive click and switch feel. Take a listen. Battery life is also fantastic, despite my initial impressions with this having a spinning hard drive. Mm. Typically under light use, doing things like word processing, 
Expect this laptop to easily grant you as minimum as seven hours on a single charge, at least out the gate, which is pretty impressive for the price point. And that's almost up there with the likes of Chromebooks and other more expensive laptops of this size. Expect the SSD equipped model to perform even better in this area. And with high definition YouTube playback in the Firefox web browser, do expect the computer to grant you roughly three hours or so of continuous playback with a 1080p 60 frames per second rendered video. In Microsoft's new Chromium derived Edge browser, I would expect that number to either remain the same or maybe slightly increase. Also the webcam on this laptop is decent enough if you want to do a quick Skype call or Discord video chat or Zoom video conference or whatever the use case might be. I wouldn't expect that the webcam looks fantastic, but under, I guess, admirable lighting, it does a decent enough job to where it works as a webcam, particularly if you have to have a webcam proctored test or something of that nature. Also the webcam is a little bit on the interesting side, shall we say? It doesn't particularly sound the greatest, but I guess, again, if you need it, it will get the job done. Just don't expect that it's going to win any awards for quality, but you have it for functionality at the base, you know, at the base minimum. Same thing would go for the speakers. They are functional, but really nothing more. I've also found that this random audio enhancement toggle I found makes the audio sound worse, like the mids are badly compressed too. Take a listen. Now, don't think I'm totally bashing on this laptop in this regard because I'm not. It does have a couple of tricks up its sleeve to keep it above water and that is its CPU and graphics, or basically this laptop's APU as a whole. The Ryzen 3 3250U is what attracted me to this laptop for this review alone. While the rest of the laptop I would consider mediocre or fine, the APU is where this thing shines. Web browsing is not a challenge for this laptop, provided you aren't heavily multitasking or juggling a dozen tabs all the time as it will eat through your precious RAM like it's nothing. But any computer can do that, as well as Google Docs, so I'm not going to bore you with that. I do want to test some other aspects of this laptop featuring benchmarks and gaming. And boy is this APU capable for the money. It is only 2 cores and 4 threads, which I'm still kind of surprised by. However, don't let that fool you. This is still a strong, capable processor in this entry level laptop range. In Performance Test 10, the CPU scored a respectable 4,191 points throughout a couple runs of the test, being about on point with the 3200U. In Cinebench R20, the 3250U scored an also respectable 818. I mean, I've gotten under 700, and I've also gotten at 800 directly, so it depends. Unfortunately, the fan isn't too loud while also under a heavy load. Where I really think this APU shines is with games. Admittedly, the choice for this review is limited, but I have to pick and choose what will run within the tight memory confinements, so I apologize for some of the choices. This laptop will definitely run more than what I'm showing during this review, as long as you upgrade the memory. But let's get started with talking about a few choice games that I played on this laptop. The first game I tested was Portal 2 and its opening sequence at 720p. I used pretty much all the high in-game settings except for very high shaders, no anti-aliasing, no v-sync, and that resulted in an average frame rate of 105, with a 1% low of 43, which is indicative of some stutter, which is not really as bad as you'd think in a game like this, although it can happen, especially if you turn the settings up, but this is a pretty old game at this point, still played very frequently by some people, it depends on the mods, but Anyways, it plays well, so nothing more to really say here. Here's Distance, a game that is very demanding, especially on laptops like this one, which are lower end and or weaker. I tested this game alongside two other machines, and that'll follow for the next two games as well. I tested at 720p with a mixture of settings, most of them at low for like texture quality and shadows, and most of the effects otherwise being turned on except for like motion blur and some other things, especially anti-aliasing being turned off. I tested alongside my main desktop and my main laptop, and as you can tell, the HP 
did hold a decent frame rate above 30, but you can definitely tell that it had some problems with stutter with its 0.1% low average there, which doesn't surprise me for something with single channel memory and only 4 gigabytes of the stuff. This game really recommends that you have 8 gigs, and again, dual channel memory helps a bunch. But still an impressive showing that this machine can actually play this game, so not too shabby. Well, it wouldn't be me benchmarking anything on any computer without the obligatory golf with your friends segment. Here we have the new Escapist map as of the final release of this game, and I ran it at 720p medium and no MSAA, but you can definitely tell this laptop was struggling to play this just in general. Once again, it's back to the single channel 4 gigabytes of RAM. Now, Golf With Your Friends is a minimum of 2 gigs of RAM, but you can definitely tell where the single channel memory hurt the performance drastically. Although, to be fair, it did do better than my main Windows laptop, but I think that's just anomalies because, well, you know how it goes with Windows PCs. Still though, it definitely can play this game very well. Don't trust the workshop maps though to give you predictable results though as they can vary, which that has happened for me before, but at least with this map in particular, it runs very well. Now, as far as more intense maps go, oh, I dare not try that because one thing limited driver support and another thing, too, again, goes back to the memory and single channel memory at that. Otherwise, as long as you upgrade the memory, this game is actually surprisingly playable on this laptop. Finally, the last game that I have pretty decent results for is Grid Autosports Benchmark Test. Again, at 720p with the medium preset and no anti-aliasing, this actually ran very well on the HP Laptop 14, almost touching 60 frames per second. Just switching the game to low would probably clean that right up. However, as you can tell by that 0.1% low of 2.1, oh man, that RAM really hurts the results, and it was definitely micro stuttery. You could definitely tell throughout the benchmark test that it was micro stuttering all over the place as Windows was accessing the hard drive. But, you know, the ratio of average to 1% low is very close, unlike the other two systems, which had a very big gap. But you know, again, RAM is key, and this HP doesn't have it, so you can definitely tell where it struggled. Still, it doesn't make this game any less unplayable, just, you know, keep that in mind. I do want to make a couple of notable exceptions, one of which was Borderlands, the Game of the Year edition, not the remaster, just the original. It ran pretty well with the maximum settings, except with, you know, dynamic shadows turned off, because that would otherwise kill the frame rate. It actually held a pretty solid 60 frames per second on average, but again, there were some micro stutters due to the fact that there's, like, basically no RAM available for software when you open basically anything on this machine. The other notable exception was Beeman G Drive of all games. I was actually surprised to see that this would launch on as little as 4 gigabytes of RAM, well, realistically 3.5 gigs because of the shared video memory, and the fact that, you know, Windows took up basically half that at idle, well, more than that, realistically. So, yeah, the fact this game actually launched, even in the basic compatibility mode that it was in at the time, still blows my freaking mind, and it actually was just about playable. I imagine if you upgrade the RAM, you could basically have a playable Beam and G Drive experience on this laptop, albeit it looks hideous, but at least it runs with very good frame rates. Again, this Ryzen APU really knows how to pull out all the stops and really impresses me at every little nook and cranny. So, very, very, very impressive showing. I could go on about the little things in this review, like the trackpad and other little nitpicks in Windows, but at the end of the day, those things don't matter too much in a laptop at this price point. Although the touchpad does track my fingers rather well, but I digress. If you're on a budget and are looking for a good computer to run your Windows applications on with the potential for running alternative operating systems like Ubuntu on it in the future, this machine is a strong contender among the Pentiums and Celerons underneath it. While this dual-core processor might not be able to top the latest 10th gen mobile Intel Core i3 variants found in slightly more expensive laptops, if you can find a good deal on this particular model, it should serve you very well, provided you upgrade the memory from 4GB. Or if other models surrounding this one go on sale, plunge for ones with a solid state drive, or more memory, or even more features. Though this one, if looking tempting, buy it. You definitely will not regret it, as it's a very solid workhorse for the money, and it should serve very well.